Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Where is everybody? Here. Here. Hi, Shabby. I don't have my co-host. My co-host is still taking breakfast over at yonder. Hey, Eva. Hello there. Over here, Eva. Hi. <laughs> okay. It is Monday today, July 29, and today we are celebrating a feast in the church. It's the feast Martha, of St. Martha. And who is Martha? Just Can we, Mary and Lazarus. Huh? Mary and Lazarus. Okay, the sister of Mary, whose feast we also just uh, celebrated Mary. recently. Oh, sorry, that's Mary Magdalene. No, yeah, Mary and Lazarus, right? <laughs> who is Lazarus? The guy who died. Okay, the brother, <laughs> the brother who died. And who? <laughs> who was uh, brought back to life by our Lord, right? And in fact, that's what, that's the gospel today. Today, there are two gospels we can choose from uh, in, in the Mass today. One and they're, they're both reflective of um, Mary, uh, Mary's uh, importance in the gospel that, you know, she's there recorded at least twice with uh, two stories. One has to do with the resurrection of Lazarus from the dead. The other one has to do with that famous story of the visit of Jesus to the house of Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, where... Um, uh, Martha complained to our Lord and said, uh, you know, I've, I've been busy here serving and my sister is just there listening to you. <clears throat> right? <clears throat> and um, and uh, she complains to Jesus and asks him, Can you please tell her to help me here. And then Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you're too busy uh, with all sorts of things, yet only one thing is necessary. And Mary has chosen the better part. Okay, um, and then the other story is uh, Lazarus' um, death, and Mary also complains. Mary, I mean, sorry, Martha also complains and says, "Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died." Okay? It's as though our, uh, as though Martha was saying, "You know, why did you tarry? Why did you delay? Why, why didn't you come right away? We sent word to you." How come you didn't come right away? Right? So it looks like Martha is a, is a complainer. Huh? Sounds familiar. Yeah? She, she complains a lot. Huh? She complains a lot. And then what does, what, does again, what does Jesus tell her again? Oh, Martha, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And anyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Jesus asks Martha. Do you believe this? Martha says, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. That's what Martha answers. So she believed. Right? She believed, except that she still complains. <laughs> she complains a lot. Now, what, does, what, what lessons can we learn from, from this gospel reading today? Number one is, I think, we should not be complainers like Martha. Okay? That's the first thing we always do. Right? When we don't like something, when something does not agree with us, our first instinct <clears throat> is to complain, to say something against somebody. Imagine here, Martha would dare complain to Jesus, right? Would dare complain to Jesus. But you know, that's also a reflection of how familiar she is with Jesus, that she knows she can say anything and speak her mind to Jesus, right? And she can complain. So there's a level of familiarity with Jesus that that. To an extent, uh, is is uh, an indication of the the intimacy that Jesus has with uh, this family, 
not only with Martha, but with Mary also and with Lazarus, that he was close to them to the extent that Martha could complain in this manner. So, but I think, um, I think we should try to um, remind ourselves that every time we complain, that it's not really, it's not really a good thing to do because Jesus always has a better plan, right? As the gospel uh, today reminds us about the resurrection of Lazarus. Many times we pray about things and we don't get the answers from God that we wanted. Many times we complain about things, about the situations we have in life, okay? and we don't understand why bad things happen to our lives, why some unfortunate events happen to our lives. Yeah? Remember, remember that story? Oh, what do you call the title of that book? Unfortunate Events? Okay. So, um, it happens. It happens. There are plenty of these kinds of things. And what, 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 what worse thing could perhaps, what, what could be more unfortunate than having somebody die in your family, right? Um, in the case of Martha, the, her brother Lazarus dies. What, what can be more depressing? What can be more unfortunate than having somebody die perhaps in an unexpected way hmm? what is that <laughs> joe stop distracting me so um where was i okay unfortunate things happen to us unfortunate events bad things can happen but you know we always have to remember that god is in control okay God is in control of our lives. And sometimes He allows bad things to happen. Not that He wills it, but He allows it. In this case, He allowed nature to take its course. Perhaps it was time for Lazarus to die for whatever. It doesn't mention the cause of his death, but maybe he got sick, very badly sick. And God allowed nature to take its course. Because that's what's natural to happen to people who are sick. It can cause their death, right? And so that's natural to happen. God did not will it to happen that way, right? But he allowed the course of nature to take place because he himself is the author of nature to begin with, right? So he did not will anything bad to happen, but allows them to happen, allows nature to take its course because... In the situation of Lazarus, he wanted to manifest something bigger, something greater, something more powerful, something more beneficial, not only for Lazarus, but for the people around him as well. Okay? So in this case, he brought Lazarus back to life. He did something good for Lazarus, good for the family. It was a big consolation for them to have their brother back. But at the same time, it was a way for Jesus to show the rest of the Jewish community that was there to condole with the family of Martha that he was God. That he was God. Okay? So that is, is, is a very big thing. So God allows these things to happen sometimes because He has something bigger in store for us in our own lives. And we can be sure of that. We can be sure of that. God always has something better in store for us despite the apparent, apparently bad things that He allows us to experience. God always has something good in store for us after that. If there's a condition though. If we have faith, if we really believe that God is in control and that God has something better for us, right? as he asks Martha, do you believe? See? I am the resurrection and the life. Do you believe this? See? He wanted to assure, he wanted to be sure that Martha actually believed and had faith. And of course, Martha answered in the affirmative. And because of that, God performed the big miracle for her. 
and for her family and for the rest of the world to see that nothing is impossible with God. Nothing. Right? God always has something better in store for us. And you know, we can bring this down to a very personal level. Many times we have struggles, personal struggles that are so difficult to overcome or it seems difficult to overcome. Sometimes we, we find it hard to overcome our sins, our sinfulness, our tendency to do wrong things. Well, nothing is impossible with God. If we have faith in God, if we have trust in God, God can always perform big miracles for us. And that way, it will be an expression of God's providence, of God's glory, because we will realize that we were not able to overcome these things just by ourselves, just by our own efforts. That a lot of this becoming better is a consequence of the grace of God in our souls. So let us have faith. Let us have faith that God knows best. God has bigger plans. God always wants what's good for us. So all of these apparently bad things in our lives, if we take it well, if we take it as a manifestation of God's providence and that God is looking after us, then we will overcome. We will overcome and better things can happen. God allows these bad things to happen to us to purify our souls, to purify our intentions. Okay? It's for our own purification. It's not for our own punishment. Sometimes we get hurt. We get hurt. Sometimes we get lonely. Sometimes we get depressed and, 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 uh, and discouraged when there are difficult things happening in our lives. But we should learn to overcome all of that. And in that struggle, we get to purify ourselves and purify our intentions and confirm our faith in God. Okay, that is it for us this morning, folks. Okay, we're off to Mass. Hope to see you all tomorrow again. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye.